All right, so how's it going? Welcome back. I'm Wyatt. I'm Pascal. And we're going to talk a little bit today more in depth than we have in the past about seam welding and stitch welding. So Pascal is our head motorsports engineer and he knows everything about this. What is seam welding? So seam welding or stitch welding, uh, talking about the same thing there, it's basically all over the car. We've got a lot of different panels that from the factory are spot welded together and they have a seam along them. So we're going to go back along that seam and add some weld, um, you know, maybe an inch every one or two inches, depending on the area. And the idea is that weld, in addition to the spot welds from the factory, will make the joints between all those seams stronger or stiffer. A new car like this, the shell is relatively strong from the factory, so you can probably go rally it. You don't need to seam weld it necessarily. Uh, but over time, you'll start to see issues where you know, seams will start to crack or break apart, or you'll get stuff will twist a little bit and move. Um, so doing this from the start while the car is new it just helps um, aid in performance a little bit, makes the whole chassis a little bit stiffer, but yeah. also over time it will make it last longer. Yeah, we used to joke at the rally school, we do some off-road classes with the Jeep Cherokees, yep. which are kind of famous for, you, you get a little flexed in some rocks and get stuck and open the door, and when you go to close the door, the handle and the latch are like a few inches off. Um, it's, it's pretty shocking. Like we sure. joke that it helps them articulate through the rough stuff. <laughs> but you can hear the whole chassis creaking, um, which is, I guess, something that would worry me if I were going to seam weld this car. When you heat different metals and cool them at different rates, if I started seam welding at the front and I went all the way to the back of the car, what might happen? Yeah, so you could actually twist the shell uh, from welding on it. Uh, something you want to be careful of both with the seam welding also when you put the roll cage in um, is have some thought. If you've got it up on jack stands and the jack stands are all uneven uh, and the car is sitting down on them and then you weld it all up, you're going to end up with a car that's taken that shape. Um, so try and have it on a flat level surface, maybe on, on its wheels. Uh, we'll also, while we're doing the welding, like leave the subframe in, leave the rear beam in, we've got this little brace for the front, um, stuff that just helps hold things where they should be so that we're not changing things as we weld. Um, the other thing you can think about is, is don't start from one side and quickly go through the whole car, kind of jump around a little bit and limit how much heat you're putting into one area at a time. Would you recommend doing the roll cage first and then seam welding, or the opposite, or what's your experience? Um, that can go both ways. Uh, sometimes what I would do is look at some areas where you might want to seam weld where you won't be able to get at once the roll cage is in. And sure. You might want to think about doing those first and then do the cage and then come back after and do the rest of it. Um, yeah, so you could go crazy and just do every single seam all over the car, um, but probably not totally necessary. <laughs> uh, I would look at sort of the most structural areas, so suspension mounting points, subframe mounting points, if you've got engine mounts, stuff that's important from a structural standpoint, go after those seams first. Um, if you've got some experience with a car, you might know other areas that you want to do more as well, like in a Fiesta, sometimes we'll find that the floor pans after a while, you'll start breaking the spot welds after they've been rallied for a few years, so it's a good idea to kind of seam weld some of the seams on the floor pan to help hold that in place a little more effectively. But yeah, generally I would stick to the suspension areas um, and anywhere a subframe mounts. In rally, we don't have any rules regarding like number of mounting points that you might see in some road racing series, uh, stuff like that. So we've got from the eight pillar bars that come down, we've got both an X that comes forward to the front strut towers, and then also a bar that you can't see that's down in here that comes straight forward. Um, the idea basically is just to tie the start towers, which obviously in a rally car especially take quite a bit of abuse, tie those back into the roll cage and help keep this area of the car from bending over time. There's two sort of theories with car prep and cars in general. You know, there's the old school folks that think that um, you should plate up all your crumple zones and that cars were better in the 70s and that thin roll cage tubing isn't the way to go and you should use, you know, 120 wall and weld everything so it's super rigid. 
And then there's other people who think that, you know, hey, the crumple zones are there to save your life and you make things, you know, maybe intentionally not lighter duty, but uh, build in some flex into the system so that it doesn't break you really as the driver. What's your thoughts on that? I think there's a happy medium somewhere in the middle of those two theories or, or, or uh, Camps. ways of thought. So, yeah. uh, obviously, like you said, there's crumple zones incorporated in a lot of cars, but and especially you, modern cars. You leave the crumple zones I'll in here? A lot of that. You don't plate these frame rings? No, because they're, they're strong enough as they are to do what they need to do. They're not just going to fail from regular use. And then in the event that you do crash or when you crash, they're still there to work and act as a composite. If you have part of your unibody where the engine mounts and you know that that's going to crack and break, you probably should reinforce it and not sure. worry about the crumple zone. But if you don't have that type of problem, I don't think it's necessary to go adding a bunch of plate and making things heavier and stronger where it doesn't really need to be. I think that's about it. As far as the actual welding goes, uh, obviously you got to clean the joint and get some of the paint and stuff off. There are some joints where you'll find it's virtually impossible to completely clean everything out of it. Yeah. Uh, my technique on that is to not be afraid to kind of have the settings on the welder such that you can burn through some of that stuff as you go. Yeah. Run a little hot. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Awesome. So thanks for watching. I've been Wyatt. Pascal. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.